What would happen if Texas filed for a divorce from the United States? Congressman Ron Paul thinks the idea of Texas leaving the union should be taken seriously. He'll tell us why when we talk to him live coming up. It's 23 minutes now after the hour. Well, for 10 years, Texas was a sovereign territory before joining the United States in 1845. It's a stuff of legend that the Lone Star State could end its ties with the U.S. if its constituents want it that way. Well, recently, Texas Governor Rick Perry, who's been highly critical of President Obama's stimulus package, raised that possibility that his state may one day secede from the union. We got a great union. Uh, there's absolutely no reason to dissolve it. But if Washington continues to thumb their nose at, at the American people, you know, who knows what might, came up, uh, what might come out of that. Well, the governor isn't the only one suggesting secession isn't out of the realm. Joining me now is Texas Congressman Ron Paul, who's live this morning in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Thanks for being with us, Congressman Paul. Thank you. So how serious is this secession talk? I don't think it's very serious. I don't think anybody called for secession, and I don't think uh, the governor called for it. But he, bring, he brings up an important issue, and I, I think the biggest surprise to me was the outrage expressed by an individual that even thinks about along these lines, because uh, I heard people say, well, this was treasonous, uh, and this was un-American. But don't they remember how we came into into our our being? Uh, we we used secession. We seceded from England. So it's a very good principle. It's a principle of of a free society. It's a shame we don't have it anymore. I argue that if you had the principle of secession, our federal government wouldn't be as intrusive into uh, state affairs. And to me, that would be very good. We, we as a nation have endorsed secession all along. I mean, think of all the secession of the countries and the republics from the Soviet system. We were delighted. We love it. And yet uh, we, we get hysterical over this. Just because people want to debate and defend the principle of secession, uh, that doesn't mean that they're calling for secession. I think it's it's, it's that restraining element of secession that would keep the federal government, uh, you know, from doing some life. But Pardon, you know, let me in ask you this: in history, said, they accepted they accepted right? the principle of secession okay. all along. Right, but you and you said it's very American to talk about secession. It's how we came into being. Thirteen colonies seceded from from the British and established a new country. But right. are you likening the current situation to life under King George? I think a lot of people are thinking that way, and I think that is what is important. People are angry, and if you if we don't sense that, we don't know exactly what's going on there. The people are angry. What I'm anticipating, though, is going to get a lot worse when a dollar collapses and the federal government can't fulfill any of its promises. What if they send you dollars and they don't work? People are just going to, they're not going to have a violent secession. They're just going to ignore the federal government because they will be in F. We'll be bringing our troops home and our empire will end. And that's, that's a different story. So I think, uh, I think it's something that we should talk about, but we should institutionalize this principle. New England wanted to secede and nobody challenged New England that it was unconstitutional in our, in our early history. And what, what if, right. what well, if let, people let, applied this? I, I just wanted to, I mean? you guys said that you, it's that you guys were talking about it more as a principle and saying that it would be a counterweight to uh, what you guys are calling federal uh, government intrusiveness and I get that but you're not really saying that Texas is going to secede but so I want to move on to the bank bailouts because this has been a source of uh, of a lot of contention you've been opposed to them uh, it looks lately though there have been some signs that perhaps it's working we, we're talking about Bank of America turning a profit Wells Fargo now saying they're able to pay back the federal government and return some of that bailout money in the end could this have turned out to be the right move? Well, if a gangster steals money and is successful, you don't celebrate. Yeah, they might be. This is just going to make make the people angrier. Aha, uh -huh, they ripped this off. They took all this money, and now they're making bundles. It's just an unfair system to penalize average people, inflate the currency, and bring on another crisis and undermine the whole system. So I would say a bank success here and there is not necessarily something to celebrate. But, you know, it's still pretty early. Uh, I, I, don't think, I don't think we're out of the woods yet. To, to celebrate bank successes right now and something else. What you have to realize is a lot of people stashed away a lot of money and uh, they took care of their bonuses and whatnot. And you're not going to erase the anger that, that has come from that uh, just because a bank made a profit. Matter of fact, I, like I say, I think it might make things worse. All right, Congressman Ron Paul, always great to get your take. Thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you.